In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this. This is a splash page where people will go to as soon as they access your website and it provides them with an animated GIF uh, saying welcome to Banksy.com and then they can click here and this button will take them to the main section of the website. So there's actually quite a few things you need to do to build this. The first thing is I created the animation. Okay, so the animation I did using a piece of software called Serif Draw Plus X3. It's a free piece of software you can get off the internet uh, and we do have it at school. So in this software, which looks like this, if you create a new document, you have the option to create a new drawing, a keyframe animation, or a stop frame animation. Now what I did for the text is I created a stop frame animation, which is a bit like taking pictures single frame at a time to build up when you put them together uh, an animated image. So all I did is I said I want to create a stop frame animation, clicked on that. That then gave me um, this, uh, this page, but it was bigger than that. If I just show you, look, if I go to new, stop frame animation, it creates for me this huge area. Now that's not as big as an A4 piece of paper at all, but it's certainly not the dimensions that I wanted to use. So the first thing I did is I went to file, page setup, and I just changed the dimensions. Yep, it's in pixels. So I made the height a lot less, so I think I changed this to something like 250. I think I kept the width at around 793 and pressed OK. And now I've got a, an area that uh, I want to create my animation on. So that's what I did. What I then did is down at the bottom here on uh, the left, you can see these are my single frames. Now what I wanted to do was to create an animation where the letters appear individually, welcome to, and then the word Banksy.com comes on at the end. So I inserted the number of frames that I knew I needed. So W-E-L-C-O-M-E-T-O -E -E and then Banksy.com requires 10 frames. So I started by inserting 10 frames. So 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now you can do it this way, or I'm sure when I show you this you can figure out how to do it the other way. And I started by putting on the last frame what I wanted to appear. So for example, I got my text tool and up here I wrote welcome to, like that. Uh, in fact, sorry, I just wrote welcome to start with. So I'm just going to increase this to font size 30. I'm going to change it to a font that's okay, like that. And then I did another piece of text that said two. And I think I made that 30 as well, but I kept it at Times New Roman like that, and just placed it here, and then I got a really big font and wrote Banksy.com, and I changed this to something really big, I think it was something like 120, oh no it wasn't, it was 72, like that, and then I'll leave it at that font in this example, and then that's how I want my animation to stop, that's the end point. Now if I want it to stop, that means that this frame needs to stop when I get to it. So here at the bottom right, I'm going to change it. Otherwise, after not after one second, it'll just flip, or 100 milliseconds, it'll just flip straight back to the beginning again. So I double click down here, and I change this to 10,000 milliseconds. So when it goes welcome to Banksy.com, it stays on the page for a bit, and then it starts the animation again. Yep. Whereas all of these frames will just move on quickly. So now all I did is I worked backwards. I got the arrow tool. I selected all of this, I copied it by pressing Control c on my keyboard, I went to the uh, previous frame, pasted it, and then I worked backwards, so I don't want that there. Then I paste that again on here, so Control v I paste it there, I delete this, I delete my O, you see what I'm doing here to build up my animation, yep, and then I'm working backwards through the frames, delete this, delete the whole of the two, so if I flick through it now, I've got welcome, T O Banksy.com. If I keep working through backwards, delete, delete, etc., etc. So you get the idea. Yep. So here's one I prepared earlier that says W E L C O M E T O Banksy.com. Yep. Right. So I've filled the page. Next thing I needed to do is press export, which is this button here. If I press export, it basically shows me that this is going to be transparent. This is what this area is here, which is what I wanted because I had a background image on my website, 
So I want the actual image to be transparent so you can see through it. I press export and then I save it in the folder where I want to keep all of my images for my website. So mine is Z drive um, in here, year eight, web design, website V1, images, and then I saved it here. I obviously called it Banksy. All right, so that's part one. I created the animation. I think hopefully following that, you'll be able to create yourself your own animation. The next thing I did to create this is we've only learned about how to create um, an index.html file. The index.html file is the file that you come to when you type in the URL at the top here. So we now need an extra page. Your home page, the very first page that you want people to come to with regards to the menu structure, i.e. this page, is no longer going to be called index.html because this page will be called index.html. Yeah? So what I did is I created two pages. I've actually created three in this folder here, index, home, and about. If I just show you those three pages, this is my index page. Notice up here, index. When I click here, it takes me to my home page. And when I click here, it takes me to my about page. Okay, so they're my three different pages. Now, I'm not going to show you how to build this home page. I'm going to show you how to build this index page. And all that's on this index page is background. And then I've put my animated GIF in the middle of the page. So notice if I resize this, it's in the middle of the page, and so is the writing underneath. Click here to enter. All right, so the code that's required for that page, very simple, it's that. I've got my core HTML. I've got my link in my head to my CSS. In my CSS, I put the background in the body. Yeah, so that's the image appearing in the body. I've then got inside my body a div that I've called main. Now a div, if you imagine, is just like an empty box that I'm putting on the page. And then I'm going to put something in that empty box. So if I go and have a look at my web page, if you imagine a box around this, in fact I can show you this box by inspecting the element. That is the empty box. Um, that is the empty box, the blue area that is surrounding um, or oh, that is encompassing my image and that text. That is what I've called the div. It's an empty box. So <clears throat> what I did is I created div ID equals main. And then inside that I put my image, which shouldn't be anything new to you. I've just said image source. And for example, if this is the index page, which is here, this is this page. So I said go into a folder called images. Go into a folder called images and get a file called banksy.gif. There's Banksy. If I right click on it and go properties, you can see that it is a GIF file. Yep. Okay, so <clears throat> take that down there. Underneath that I created a P tag, which is a paragraph tag, and then I just wrote click, and then I did an ahref, which is a hyperlink. Alright, so basically this ahref home.html creates for me this and that's my hyperlink because I've wrote the word here and that word here is encompassed within this a tag here and the close of the a tag here and then it says to enter now the only really tricky bit is the div tag then needs styling so that I can put this image in the middle of my page and it's not right at the top so all I did there is I wrote some style.css and I created a style for the main. Let me explain what I mean. This div tag has an ID of main, which means I'm going to give you some style. And the style I'm going to give you is this style that's in my CSS called main. So I'm applying this main style to, oops, I'm applying this main style to this div ID here. Okay, and the style properties that I've given it is margin auto, which means it'll always put it in the middle of your page. The padding top 125, basically what that does is it gives me this gap between the top of the page and the word welcome. So if I decrease that to show you what it would do, if I change this to padding top 5 and save it, 
and then go back in here and refresh you can see it's now further to the top of my page all right so I'll just undo that <clears throat> I then give it a width of 920 which means that the little invisible box that this image is in, uh, enclustered within is 920 pixels in width so I showed you that a minute ago look if I inspect the element this blue box you can see is 920 pixels in width um, what else have I done Oh, my code's suddenly gone. Zoom back up. Yep. I've then said text align center, which means keep the text that's inside that div in the middle. I've given it a font family of Arial, and I've set the font size to 24. Notice that I'm talking there about this font size. That font size is 24. This font size for the picture is determined when I created the actual animation here. So I create my animation. I create my page, Oops. create my animation, I create my pages, home and index, and then I apply a style here for a main div, and I put my content inside that. That's how you create an animated GIF on a splash page.